Now, the next example I'm going to do is not in the, no not in the questions and not in the notes, and you'll see why I'm going to do it in a minute. But I'm going to, it's from chapter 3. Okay? And the question is... <coughs> find the complete solution for um, that equation... Um, where the system is initially at rest, okay? And so, in the, in the formula sheet, you've got an equation where this is sine omega t, okay? That's given in the formula sheet. Um, but here we've got cosine omega t, and this affects um, the, the solution that you're going to get. So then we're going to go through the, the complete process so you're aware of, you know, the, like I said, the process to go through. When you've got a question, you've got to find the solution with a forcing function. So here's my single degree of freedom system. And we know that the complete solution, x of t, is xcf, which is the complementary function, plus xpi, which is the particular integral. The first term, xcf, is always going to be the solution for this system when the force is zero. It's the, called the homogeneous solution, where you've got mx double dot plus kx equals zero. And we know that, that's on your equation sheet, that's A1 cosine omega naught t plus A2 sine omega naught t. Where A1 and A2 are determined from your initial conditions. XPI is a bit more complicated. We've got a sinusoidal forcing function. And so the trial function has to be a sinusoid as well. But we don't know where it starts, we don't know whether it's a sine or cosine, whatever. So we have to use the term alpha cosine omega t plus beta sine omega t. Well, alpha and beta we will find. And omega here is not omega naught. Omega is the frequency of the function that I'm actually applying. Okay, and the force that's being applied. It's not the natural frequency. Omega naught is the natural frequency. Omega is the frequency of the function, the forcing function that I'm applying. And so we have to put this equation into this equation. And so I have to take the second derivative of this, xpi double dot, where I'm going to get minus omega squared, because that comes out of here and it comes out of there. You get a minus sign out, and then you've got exactly the same thing in here, plus beta sine omega t. When you take the first derivative of this function, you get an omega coming out of each of these terms. The, the cosine turns into minus sine, and the sine turns into cosine. You take the derivative again, that minus cosine becomes minus sine, another omega comes out, <coughs> and obviously you had a cosine here, that turns into a minus sine, you get, and another omega comes out. So you've got a minus omega squared for both of these terms. And you end up with that. So we take this equation and this equation, we plug it into this equation. So we have minus omega squared times by m. We've got alpha cosine omega t plus beta sine omega t plus k alpha cosine omega t plus beta sine omega t equals f naught cosine omega t. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the cosine terms and the sine terms together because we can match it up with over here. So we've got cosine omega t times by minus omega squared m times by alpha plus k times alpha equals f naught cosine omega t. And here we've got sine omega t minus omega squared m times by beta 
plus k times y beta equals 0. The reason it equals 0 is there's no sine omega t term on this side. We've just got a cosine omega t term. It's quite clear from this equation that beta must be 0. OK? Omega squared cannot be 0. And m squared, m is not 0. K is not 0. The sine omega t, you just cancel from both sides, so that disappears. So the only way this equation is true is if beta is 0. OK? I could write it out. That disappears. We end up with beta times by k minus m omega squared equals 0. The only way this equation could be true is if beta is 0. OK? For this one, we can cancel out the cosine omega t, so that's on both sides, and we can see straight away that alpha must be f naught divided by k minus m omega squared. In long form down here, OK, we've got minus omega squared times by m times by alpha plus k alpha is f naught. You can see that alpha times by k minus m omega squared is f naught, therefore alpha must be f naught divided by k minus m omega squared. <coughs> so we can see that XPI is f naught k minus m omega squared cosine of omega t. So that's referring to this equation up here. OK, whoops, this one here. We found the alpha term, which is there. OK, and so you plug alpha into that equation. Obviously, beta is 0, so that disappears. You end up with xpi being this term here. So x of t is xcf plus xpi. So we've got a1 cosine omega naught t plus a2 sine <coughs> omega naught t plus f naught divided by k minus m omega squared cosine of omega t. There's the general solution. So this is the general solution. So I'll write this here, general general solution. Now we must apply the initial conditions. We said initially at rest, so we have say x of 0 is the same as x dot of 0, which is 0. System is initially at rest. So those are the initial conditions. When time is 0, um, the displacement is zero, and when time is zero, the velocity is also zero. And so we have to apply that to this equation and to its derivative. So let's, let's get the derivative up. So x dot of t, we have an a, 1. We have a, an omega naught that comes out. And obviously cosine turns into minus sine. So we have a minus sine, sine, omega naught t, plus a2, omega naught, and then sine turns into cosine, cosine, omega naught t. And then here, we've got a constant, so plus f naught, over k minus m omega squared, but obviously cosine turns into minus sine, so in fact, this is a minus omega sine omega t. So let's apply the initial conditions. x dot of 0, so we refer to this equation up here. Cosine of 0 is 1, so we have a1. Co sine of 0 is 0, so that disappears. And then here we've got cosine of 0, so we have a1 plus f naught divided by k minus m omega squared equals 0. So from that, a1 must be minus f naught over k minus m omega squared.
x dot of 0, well, that's referring to this equation. Sine of 0 is 0, so that term disappears. OK. Cosine of 0 is 1, so we have this term, a2 omega naught, OK, times by 1. And then sine of 0 is 0, so that disappears. So we have this term. And for that to be true, a2 must be 0. So we plug these values for a1 and a2 back into our general solution and you end up getting x of t is going to be f0 divided by k minus m omega squared times by cosine omega t minus cosine omega0 t. Now you can see that this solution is subtly different from the case where you had sine. Okay? Where you had sine, this was a sine, this was a sine, but this was multiplied by a factor, omega divided by omega naught. So it's slightly different with the different um, question to start with. <coughs> 